Every day, we face challenges stemming from work pressures, relationships, and societal expectations, creating waves of emotions and energy that are not easily controlled. Have you ever stopped to wonder, who are the people around you? Do the energies they bring drive you to betterment or simply leave you drained and exhausted? Today, let's delve into the timeless wisdom of Stoicism and uncover 10 principles to help you manage emotions, set personal boundaries, and choose companions who truly align with you. You will discover a path to enlightenment that empowers you to become stronger, develop holistically, and find deeper meaning amidst life's challenges. Before we begin, I invite you to show your support by tapping the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to join our community. Stay focused till the end, because these are not just hollow advices, but practical strategies you can apply daily, transforming how you perceive yourself and others through a stoic perspective. Now, let's get started. Number one. Selective Compassion Compassion is like a cozy warmth that brightens up our hearts, showing that we genuinely care about each other. But it's important to use this warmth wisely so it doesn't fade away in the dark. Selective compassion is like using a flashlight instead of lighting up the entire house. You concentrate where it's most necessary, where you can truly help. Imagine it as the world being full of challenges and hurts, too many for any single person to fix on their own. It's like being in a little boat in a stormy sea, reaching out to those who are lost. If we try to rescue everyone at once, we might end up sinking ourselves. Selective compassion helps us see where we can help without endangering ourselves, keeping the boat steady while we lend a hand to others. This kind of caring reminds us it's fine to say we can't be everywhere at the same time. It's not about ignoring tough situations in the world, but about picking our fights wisely. When a friend needs us, we can show up because our being there truly matters. But for bigger issues we can't directly tackle, we do what's possible, maybe lending a hand from a distance, without overwhelming ourselves by trying to solve all the world's problems. Keeping this balance also involves looking after ourselves. We can't give to others what we ourselves lack. If we drain all our energy trying to fix everything and everyone, we'll have nothing left to give. It's like we're shining a light for everyone else and forgetting to illuminate our own way. So, if you spot someone who needs a hand and you're able to help, step up. Your compassion and actions can really make a difference. But if it's beyond your control, do what you can without beating yourself up for not doing more. Sometimes the best way we can help others is by taking care of ourselves first. That way, when someone needs us, we're in a good place to offer support. Being picky about where we direct our care and love is all about being wise. It's about picking spots where we can genuinely make a difference, while also making sure we're strong and healthy enough to keep helping in the future. And it's important to remember that by looking after our own well-being, we guarantee that our ability to help others stays strong. Our light keeps shining brightly for those who need it. Number two, letting go of toxic relationships. Have you ever reflected on how much the people in our lives shape our experiences? It often feels like we are constantly surrounded by demands and judgments, where every little thing we do is closely watched. However, there is a hidden wisdom that can transform our experience, choosing who we let be close to us. Some people are like serene waters, gently propelling us forward and encouraging our growth. On the flip side, there are those who resemble turbulent storms, stirring up chaos and leaving us feeling lost. The Stoics, ancient sages revered for their wisdom in navigating life's challenges, delved into this concept with great insight. As Marcus Aurelius wisely stated, 
Nowhere you can go is more peaceful, more free of interruptions than your own soul. This implies the importance of self-mastery and inner peace, regardless of external chaos. It prompts us to reflect. Do our friendships contribute to our personal growth or hinder it? Removing oneself from toxic relationships isn't a sign of weakness. Rather, it demonstrates strength. It's a conscious decision to surround ourselves with individuals who genuinely uplift and enrich our lives. Picture it like renovating a house. At times, we need to tear down old, dilapidated structures to create space for something better. Though it demands honesty and courage to part with what no longer serves us, imagine the sense of relief walking through rooms filled only with positivity and support, away from negativity and criticism. Perhaps it's time for some introspection. Consider the voices that surround you. Are they lifting you higher or pulling you down? Removing toxic friendships isn't merely an act of self-preservation. It's a testament to your inner strength and a step towards leading a more serene and fulfilling life. Always remember, the individuals we allow into our inner circle play a pivotal role in shaping our experiences. Let's be more discerning in our choices. This is an opportune time to evaluate our surroundings, deliberate thoughtfully, and implement the changes that are needed. Ultimately, the fabric of our lives is woven by the companions we keep. So, are you ready to make this deliberate choice? Number three, setting personal limits. Time is a precious asset that grows more valuable with each passing moment, and our energy is a limited reserve. Establishing boundaries is not just a tactic for survival, but a foundational principle for leading a meaningful and genuine life. But what does it truly signify to establish personal boundaries? And more importantly, how does it help us deal with the complexities of modern life? Think of boundaries like the lines on a map, marking out the space that belongs just to you. Your time, your energy, your feelings. These boundaries are the unseen demarcations that indicate how far we're willing to extend, what we're comfortable with, and when we need to assert our limits. Essentially, they represent self-respect and an acknowledgement of our intrinsic worth. Lacking these distinct boundaries, we open ourselves up to burnout, a growing concern in a culture that extols constant activity. When we're unable to differentiate between external demands and our own requirements, we surrender control over our lives and a substantial aspect of our selfhood. Setting boundaries is like walking a tightrope, a subtle interplay between generosity and self-preservation. It entails recognizing that in order to genuinely nurture others, we must first ensure our own well-being. As Epictetus famously remarked, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. It involves the skill of refusing when required, not out of self-centeredness, but out of the understanding that safeguarding our own mental and emotional health creates a richer environment for all our interactions. Establishing boundaries begins with self-awareness, comprehending your genuine values, recognizing what depletes your energy and what replenishes it. It's an ongoing journey of tuning into your own needs and mastering the art of articulating them confidently. Picture, if you will, the liberating sensation that accompanies boundary setting, the ability to decide how, with whom, and in what endeavors you allocate your time and energy. Imagine the tranquility of knowing you're living in accordance with your core beliefs. Take a moment to contemplate what boundaries are essential for safeguarding your time, energy, and mental well-being. Keep in mind, setting boundaries isn't about building walls to isolate yourself. Rather, it's about fostering deeper and more genuine connections with others. So, why not begin outlining these boundaries now? After all, the true measure of your life lies not in the tasks you complete, 
but in the quality of the moments you choose to embrace. Are you ready to seize control and define the boundaries that will shape your path ahead? Number four, sharing thoughts and emotions judiciously. In a world where every word holds the potential to construct or dismantle, to bring together or tear apart, the skill of voicing sentiments and viewpoints with prudence emerges as a guiding light of sagacity. Envision our words as seeds sown in a garden. They possess the potency to flourish or wither, depending on how they are nurtured. Just as a skilled gardener tends to their plants with care and prudence, so too must we tend to our words. In this regard, Stoic philosophy serves as a gardener's handbook, offering insights to cultivate our communication amidst the varied landscapes of human interaction. The Stoics remind us that having control over how we think and react isn't just about being disciplined, it's also about being truly free. Imagine having the power to decide, fully aware, how you respond in any situation, instead of being driven by intense feelings or knee-jerk reactions. It's like having the remote control to your own life, where you get to choose how you want to react steering yourself towards peace and clarity, even when things get tough. Epictetus wisely noted, we cannot control the external events around us, but we can control our reactions to them. This encapsulates the core principle of Stoic philosophy, the liberty to respond with wisdom and mindfulness. But why is it vital to moderate the expression of our emotions and opinions? We exist in an era of immediate connectivity where every thought can be broadcasted to the world in seconds. Nevertheless, the rapidity of our communication should not eclipse the profundity and quality of our interactions. When we choose our words thoughtfully, we steer clear of misunderstandings and needless conflicts. And most importantly, we nurture valuable relationships. Additionally, by cultivating inner calmness and striving to understand before seeking to be understood, we become shining examples of empathy and insight in our communities. Truly listening, embracing diverse perspectives, even when they differ from our own, is an act of bravery and kindness that strengthens the bonds between us. Let's illustrate this with a common scenario. You find yourself in strong disagreement with a friend's opinion on a certain issue. The Stoic philosophy doesn't discourage us from expressing our dissent. Rather, it encourages us to do so respectfully, striving to find common ground and mutual understanding. Rather than engaging in an ego-driven conflict, we transform the dialogue into a pathway for personal development and collective enlightenment. Ultimately, by embracing this life philosophy, we realize that genuine communication extends far beyond mere words. It thrives on authenticity, vulnerability, and the bravery to reveal our true selves, complete with our uncertainties and aspirations. And in this endeavor, we not only discover our own voice, but also encourage others to discover theirs. So let us select our words with the same tender care that a gardener showers upon their plants. May we practice patience, compassion, and intentionality in our communication. Let our words radiate light, not darkness. And as we journey along this path, may we unearth not only the art of speaking, but also the profound art of living. If you've journeyed with us thus far, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Your feedback can help impact even more lives. Let's keep moving forward together. Number five, exercising self-preservation in love. When it comes to love, that universal desire we all long for, it's not merely about the feeling itself. It's about the Stoic approach we adopt to truly appreciate its essence. The Stoics offered intriguing insights on this matter. They suggested that we can indeed love deeply, yet in a manner that respects others' freedom, devoid of suffocation or restraint. Contemplating love in this light, resembles allowing a bird to soar freely. 
clinging too tightly impedes its natural expression and ability to thrive. Yet, once you nurture it with tenderness and grant it freedom, both parties find contentment. True love, the type championed by the Stoics, is liberating. It empowers individuals to embrace their true selves without limitations. Loving with freedom doesn't diminish its depth. Rather, it enhances it. It's a more enlightened approach to love, opting to be together out of desire rather than necessity. It's realizing that each of us is complete within ourselves, but we make the choice to share that completeness with another without relying on them. This kind of love acknowledges the inevitability of change and the impermanence of things. Instead of mourning this fact, we learn to treasure every moment, understanding that each shared experience is a precious gift. Marcus Aurelius once said, Accept the things to which fate binds you, and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. Even if circumstances shift in the future, the love experience leaves a positive imprint, a lingering light that never fades. Just envision the beauty of loving in this manner, wholeheartedly, yet without sacrificing our identity. This is the lesson the Stoics aimed to impart, to love deeply, while maintaining inner strength and tranquility. So, let's decide to be with someone not to fill a void, but to complement, to enhance each other's lives, making them even more exquisite. That's the call for today, to love in a manner that liberates, that brings joy, that ignites our vitality and happiness. Number six, self-focus and assertiveness. Stoicism teaches us to be true to ourselves and to prioritize our well-being. It's a straightforward but groundbreaking concept Looking out for yourself isn't selfish. It's essential for becoming the greatest you can be. Why is taking care of ourselves important? Because when we're healthy, strong, and balanced, we're better able to help others. Let's break it down. Think of yourself as a glass of water. If the glass is empty, how can you give water to someone else? You've got to fill your own glass first. That's self-care. Self-care means making sure you're ready to deal with the ups and downs of everyday life and to support those around you. It's not about constantly prioritizing yourself over others, but it's also not about always putting yourself last. Being genuine and truthful in how you relate to others is also key to this way of living. Being honest and genuine might feel scary at first. You might worry about how others will react. But the reality is, speaking the truth leads to stronger and more meaningful bonds. When you stay true to yourself and to others, you form relationships built on trust and respect. And that's what makes any relationship strong and healthy. So, putting these ideas into action begins with everyday decisions. It means politely declining things that don't match your values or when you're just too tired. It's okay to take breaks without feeling bad about it. And when you're talking with others, it's about being truthful, even if it's hard. By turning these actions into routines, you're not just looking out for yourself, but also inspiring others to do the same. It's like a chain reaction of positivity, benefiting everyone involved. Always keep in mind that taking care of yourself and your health isn't selfish, it's essential. Number seven, facing adversity and cultivating resilience. Facing tough times and discovering our inner resilience is a profound concept that encourages us to view life through a new lens. We understand that life isn't always smooth sailing. It throws us curveballs and hurdles to overcome. Yet, it's during these moments of adversity that we learn our most valuable lessons and uncover chances for personal development. As Seneca, the Stoic philosopher, eloquently stated, fire is the test of gold, adversity of strong men. Consider this, every challenge that arises serves as a distinct examination of our inner strength and adaptability. When confronted with a problem, 
we are presented with two options, to withdraw and concede defeat or to confront it directly, leveraging it as a catalyst for our personal growth. Stoic philosophy, abundant in ancient wisdom, advocates for choosing the latter path. Consider this scenario. Each obstacle is a question life poses to us, prompting us to reflect on what lessons we can extract from it. Embracing our challenges with this perspective, we convert them into avenues of opportunity. Every adversity becomes a classroom. Every hurdle, a chance to showcase our resilience. So, how do we translate this into reality? It all starts with acceptance. Recognizing that life will throw challenges our way is the first step towards conquering them. This doesn't mean we have to like or wish for these situations, but simply acknowledging that they are part and parcel of our journey. From there, we delve into seeking the lessons. Every challenge holds valuable teachings for us, whether they reveal something about ourselves or offer insights into the world around us. Moreover, embracing adversity enables us to fortify our emotional resilience. By confronting challenges directly, we cultivate the ability to regulate our emotions, refusing to let fear or frustration overpower us. This emotional resilience serves as a potent instrument, not only for surmounting current obstacles, but also for equipping us to tackle unforeseen challenges in the future. To put it simply, Welcoming adversity and uncovering strength in challenges presents a formidable way to navigate life. It turns fear into bravery, uncertainty into prospects, and hardship into fortitude. It urges us to delve into ourselves, acknowledge our resilience, and move forward with conviction, assured that we possess the capacity to tackle any obstacles that come our way. Number eight developing a grateful mindset. Have you ever thought about why, when things quiet down and the hustle and bustle of our daily routines fades away, we suddenly feel this soothing peace inside? It's like a soft, gentle wave of gratitude washing over us, sneaking in without much fanfare. It's nothing groundbreaking or out of this world, just a simple but beautiful truth. This wisdom traces back to the days of the Stoic thinkers, who emphasized self-awareness and moral goodness. They illuminated the profound impact of appreciating the blessings we have. Marcus Aurelius once mused, when you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. Gratitude isn't just about saying thanks. It's about recognizing the invaluable worth of life's little treasures, the people we encounter, and the lessons woven into every experience, no matter how tough. Picture this. Every tough moment is like a secret mentor, imparting crucial wisdom for our personal development. And what makes this idea so impactful? It transforms our perspective on the world. Suddenly, obstacles become stepping stones, Challenges morph into chances. Gratitude shifts our focus away from constantly seeking more, from chasing novelty and grandeur, and grounds us in appreciating the present moment, finding contentment in what already exists. Incorporating this practice into our daily lives amidst the chaos can seem daunting, but it's surprisingly simple. Begin with the basics. Take a moment each day to pause and observe. Notice the little things, the warmth of your morning coffee, a friend's genuine smile, the beauty of a sunset after a long day. These small treasures often slip by unnoticed. Shifting our perspective in this way not only enriches our own experiences, but also deepens our connections with others. Gratitude acts as a connector drawing people together. When we openly express our gratitude towards others, we're not just saying thank you, we're affirming their significance in our lives, fostering a cycle of acknowledgement and warmth. And when it comes to nurturing emotional and spiritual resilience, 
Gratitude stands as a sturdy cornerstone, providing strength and stability in challenging times. Gratitude teaches us the art of flexibility, urging us to adapt to life's ever-changing rhythms. It reveals our place in the vast tapestry of existence, where we are intricately linked to one another, to the world, to the cosmos. This profound sense of connection empowers us, enriching our humanity and bringing us closer to wholeness. Therefore, I extend to you an invitation to embark on this transformative journey, where each new day offers a chance to nurture and grow gratitude within ourselves. Consider gratitude not as a task, but as a delightful present you grant yourself. Each morning, as you open your eyes to the world, take a moment to ponder something you're thankful for. It could be the simplest of pleasures or a fleeting moment of joy. Just acknowledge it. Over time, you'll observe how this small act has the power to reshape your life. It will usher in more radiance, tranquility, and a profound sense of being truly alive with each passing day. Number nine, living fully in the present. Seizing the present moment with passion sets us on a path of profound transformation towards what truly matters in life. Drawing from timeless, stoic wisdom, we learn to ground ourselves in the here and now. Because truth be told, life unfolds in the present. Each breath signifies a new beginning, and every moment offers an opportunity to live fully. As Marcus Aurelius once advised, never let the future disturb you. You will meet it if you have to with the same weapons of reason which today arm you against the present. Our minds tend to wander, caught up in memories or worrying about what's to come, missing out on the beauty of now. But when we focus on the present, we break free from those chains, channeling our efforts into what we can actually control, making the most of every moment. Just picture the incredible impact of truly immersing yourself in the present moment, of fully experiencing every sensation, of being entirely absorbed in every task, regardless of how mundane. Not only does this enhance our overall life experience, but it also sharpens our effectiveness and concentration, enabling us to fully enjoy the good times and confront obstacles with a fresh perspective. So, how do we nurture this skill of living fully in the present? It starts with awareness, with simply recognizing when our minds wander away from the present moment. Each time we catch ourselves drifting, we gently, without criticism, redirect our focus back to the here and now, whether it's by tuning into our breath, our senses, or the activity we're engaged in. This habit of coming back to the present can be reinforced through meditation, mindfulness exercises, or even by immersing ourselves in activities that demand our complete attention. And as we continue to develop this skill, our gratitude for life deepens. Suddenly, the smallest moments sparkle with fresh significance. Our connections with others become more profound, and even hurdles appear less daunting because we're armed with the clarity and serenity that only living in the moment can offer. Living fully in the present is truly an expression of self-care and reverence for life itself. When we consciously embrace each moment, we not only enhance our own lives, but also bring joy to those we interact with. Every moment becomes a reason to rejoice, a testament to the wonder of simply being alive. Right here, right now. Let's all make a commitment to embrace the present moment with all our hearts, recognizing its preciousness and uniqueness. May we uncover joy in the simplest of things, draw strength from our presence, and find richness in the everyday. Through this, may we unlock the genuine fulfillment that arises from fully participating in the vibrant mosaic of life. Number 10. Self-sufficiency and independence. Ever heard of the concept of being your own happiness guru? Well, that's sort of what those ancient Stoics were getting at with this idea of self-sufficiency. But wait, don't get it twisted. 
It's not about building walls around yourself or acting like you're a lone wolf. It's more about digging deep within yourself to find that sweet spot of contentment and tranquility. Without always looking for a pat on the back or a helping hand from others. It's about making the most of what you've got, aiming to be a decent, brave, and centered individual. Think of these qualities as precious gems tucked away within us, unshakable and untouchable by anyone else. When we embrace them fully, outside forces like the opinions of others or challenging circumstances lose their power over us. But how do we reach this state of inner strength? There's no secret recipe. It's a journey we embark on one step at a time, striving to improve ourselves each day, confronting obstacles directly, and growing from our missteps without allowing them to dictate our identity. As you walk this path, you'll discover that true happiness doesn't rely heavily on external factors. It doesn't mean you'll stop appreciating the company of others or the joys of life. Instead, you'll cherish them even more, but in a way that's not tied to needing them for fulfillment. Embracing self-sufficiency is a voyage of self-discovery, leading to a sense of liberation and independence. In closing, as we navigate the ebbs and flows of life, let's remember the profound insights shared today. Let's strive to embrace the wisdom of Stoicism and apply its principles in our daily lives. Together, let's cultivate an environment where positivity thrives, where we uplift each other, and where we foster growth and understanding. So, dear viewers, take a moment to reflect on what resonated with you from today's discussion. Share your thoughts, experiences, and any additional insights you may have in the comments below. Let's engage in a conversation that enriches us all and reinforces the power of community and shared learning. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Stoic philosophy. And for those eager for more wisdom and guidance, be sure to check out the recommended videos displayed on your screen now. May your path be illuminated by moments of clarity, joy, and growth. Until we meet again, stay inspired, stay resilient, and above all, stay true to yourself.